Hey guys, Pix100 here, back with another GIMP tutorial, and today I'm going to show you how to make a uh, star field with a nebula in it. So let's start by creating a new file, which can be any size, and so since I'm going to use this for the thumbnail, I'm going to make it 720 by 1280, because that's the size of the thumbnail. And so let's create the first layer which is already in by default but I'm gonna rename it to nebula plasma and so let's go to filters render noise plasma um, if you don't know how to use the filters I have a filters tutorial for GIMP which will be down in the description and so let's just cl keep clicking new seed until we find something we like. Uh, let's go with that. I like that. So let's create a new layer and call it Nebula Noise. Okay, and go to filters and render noise, solid noise. You get this weird cloud looking shape, which this is another filter that I went over in the um, filters tutorial. And let's make that a bit smaller and add a bit more detail to it. Yeah. Now, all these filters that I'm using, just um, eyeball it. You could go into detail, or you could go into specifics with the different numbers, but for the most part I like to eyeball these things let's do that um, so let's go and add a another new layer uh, let's do the color plasma layer and filters uh, render we want another plasma um, but you want it to look different than the plasma that we did previously. Uh, I'm gonna look for one that has lots of red in it. Yeah, let's go with that one. And so let's also change these um, layer modes. So the nebula noise is supposed to be a linear burn and the color plasma is supposed to be an overlay and so as you can see that has created the <coughs> excuse me that has created the black background with the different colored clouds in it that comes from a nebula and so let's now add stars so let's do front stars and I actually want this to be in between and it will be addition and the foreground color has to be white and the background color is black and then let me temporarily switch them to fill in this layer with black you can't see that I filled it in with black because it's set to addition but if I remove all the other layers you can see that it is black um, addition is takes the RGB values of that layer and adds them to the RGB values of the layers below it. So since it's black, zero added to everything is the same as it was before. But let's go to render. Uh, no, not render. I want noise. Let's do CIE noise and set dulling to 8 and lightness to 100 and chroma and hue down to 0 and let's just hit new seed a couple times click OK and then go to uh, colors uh, brightness and contrast and let's raise the contrast up a bit around 60 ish 
and the brightness let's raise that to 20 yeah that looks good click OK and then you can see that there are stars starting to form what I want to do is go to the filters light and shadow and add one more thing to it let's add the sparkle filter and so we want sparkle to be 0, 0, 001 uh, 1 for the intensity spike length at 10 uh, points to be 4 as you can as you see in like cartoons when they show a star sparkle it has like those four points on it uh, let's set the angle to be random so that they're not all pointing at the same spot um, and everything else looks good so let's hit OK we now have a bunch of stars sparkling throughout the thing uh, and so let's add one more layer for the stars and make it the back stars put it below the front stars and have it be addition as well fill it with black and then do the same noise the this noise CIE and 8 75 zero, 0 hit new seed a couple times okay and it didn't really do much in a long scheme of things it's more of a detail thing for that because the star it's a lot of stars that are tiny but you can see if I remove these there are a bunch of little tiny stars but they're smaller than the front stars but there are also more of them which is why they're the back stars and we're also going to add light and shadow sparkle to this as well um, set to 6 and 5 and 10 and 4 and negative 1 1 0 0 0 okay and so that added a bunch of tinier sparkles to it and so if you wanted to you could stop it at here but there are two more things that you could do to add more detail to it so the first thing is you can add a supernova and so you want this to be there and go to filters lights and shadow supernova set it to white you could randomize it but that doesn't seem to really do much um, and let's move that to here and because the resolution of my image is smaller I'm actually going to make the supernova smaller but if you're dealing with a higher quality image that's at like 1080p or 4k or any other size to be honest um, you might want that supernova to be bigger or smaller just depends on what you're doing um, and I'm gonna hit OK and then I'm gonna go to filters and click reshow supernova and let's make that white and I'm gonna put that there I'm gonna put that there and then bring this one down to 10 as well and yeah I think that's good for the supernovas the other optional thing you could do is mess with the color levels and by that I mean you can scale it so that the red can only be between this range um, and so if the red is outside of the range then it automatically adjusts so you could say that the mint that the red has a minimum of 128 and a maximum of 255 um, or the green has a 
maximum of 180 or something. So let's go to color and levels and actually I want to adjust the plasma level so let's go to colors levels and let's go to the red. I'm gonna drop the red down to 128. So that just took out a lot of the red in the background. And I'm gonna say that the blue has a minimum of 64. So that just brightened up some of the blues. And I'm gonna hit OK. And I'm gonna go to the top plasma color and go to color and levels and say the red has a minimum of let's say 64 and the green has a maximum of actually no I'm gonna do the blue with a maximum of 192 and say the green has a minimum of 64 as well no that's too much um 32 that's better let's lower this down to 192 and so I just added some more color variants to it because if removing these other layers you can see that this plasma is now mostly uh, red and pink and orange because I lowered the amount of blue in it raised the amount of red in it and both lowered and raised the amount of green in it. And this one is mostly green and blue because I lowered the amount, of, the amount of red in it and raised the amount of blue in it. And so altogether, there's this pinkish bluish spot here, there's this blue spot here, green spot here, and it's like a variety of colors in between. And so there you go. That's how you make a star field with a nebula in it with GIMP. It's a combination of all these layers and the modes and the filters. Um, so like I said with the when teaching layer modes with the layer mode tutorial, which is linked down in the description as well, um, you can combine filters and layer modes um, and you can intricately combine different layer modes to get neat effects without having to go through too much work. So hope you guys enjoyed. Links are down in the description. Hit the like button. Till next time. Bye.